Hello and welcome to The Voluntarist. Today we're going to be talking about the gender pay gap. Don't assume that I'm just going to dismiss the whole thing because that's not what I'm going to do. And just because I said that I'm not going to dismiss the whole thing, don't assume that I'm going to validate the whole 23% difference garbage. Just listen patiently and, and then let me know what you think in the comments below. Alright, here we go. The gap that could be relevant or attributable to discrimination is not the 22% uh, difference as cited by Sanders, Hillary, and even the President of the United States, President Barack Obama. This statistic is known as the raw wage gap, which only compares the average yearly income of all men to all women without considering things like age, education, experience, marital status, if the worker had children, race, region, occupation, industry, percent female, male, union interference, full versus part-time, or firm size, just to name a few. In 2009, the Department of Labor hired CONSAD Research Corps to study the wage gap. It was found that the wage gap, when considering said variables, is between 4.8 cents and 7.1 cents per dollar and may be caused by socially acceptable differences as opposed to overt discrimination against women. To read this report entitled, An Analysis of Reasons for the Disparity in Wages Between Men and Women, Google Gender Gap DOL Report and open the first PDF. Skip to section 4 for a summary. Despite having the CONSAD report on record, the Department of Labor under the Obama administration still insists that the wage gap is 23 cents per dollar and blames it mostly on discrimination, citing questionable reports which do not consider all variables affecting the pay of an individual. I consider this practice to be misleading and divisive. If you still are not convinced, another report published in October 2012 by the American Association of University Women entitled Graduating to a Pay Gap, the Earnings of Women and Men One Year After College Graduation, corroborates the CONSAD conclusion with a pay gap of 6.6 .6 cents per dollar in favor of men. This report even addresses the problems of pay secrecy and debt, but ultimately highlights cultural issues which lead to individual choices based on gender, which cause some pay disparity. For example, Female mechanics are rare, just as male primary educators are rare. This is caused in part by the personal career choices of people, individuals conforming to gender roles and other complex social variables. However, this report implies that strengthening laws that have already existed for decades can somehow eliminate the pay gap. Of course, I am extremely against this. Of course, you could have inferred this from my channel. But anyways, the problem is that the remaining gap that still exists even after compensating for as many variables as can be reasonably measured is unexplained. There are many theories such as overt discrimination, lack of skill in wage negotiations, income secrecy, distorting worker value, uh, etc. But until this gap can be identified, quantified, and verified, no intellectually responsible person can assert one mechanism over the other. Furthermore, it can be caused by a complex combination of governmental policies and personal choices. Addressing the change from the 23% difference in the raw average of annual pay between men and women to the 4.8 to 7.1% difference in annual wages between men and women, it is important to realize that this large jump was caused simply by examining the socially acceptable variables which contribute to annual earnings. This means that we know now that 69 to 79% of the raw wage gap is due to reasonable conditions which determine an employee's value in the workplace. In other words, it's up to women to make career choices that will remedy this measured difference, thus increasing female average annual pay by 20.6 to 23.6%. The remaining 4.8 
to 7.1% difference in annual wage that has not been irrefutably verified for causation is still a mystery. It could be caused by any number of combinations of things. While discrimination surely plays some part in this, though I'm convinced that it's negligible when considering entire economies, neither the extent nor the methods have been measured. I urge you all to remain objective. Do not demand legislation to fix problems we cannot verify. Such efforts would only waste time and further divide the world. Search for truth. Don't act on impulse.